Hey everybody, just wanted to hop on here and do a quick little tutorial on math for those of you that maybe didn't get to join our math meeting yesterday. This week's math skill is um, one that seems pretty easy because it's just working with single digit numbers. You guys have been doing so much hard work with those three digits and four digits and four two digit numbers and doing all those regrouping strategies and things like that, that adding three plus three plus three just seems simple, right? Which is awesome. It means that you have built some great background knowledge for this year. What equal groups allows us to do is to make sense of our numbers and making sure that we can partition, we can distribute them evenly. And that's going to be a valuable skill for your whole life where you're trying to make sure that if you have, you know, 24, um, stickers to pass out and you have eight kids, can you give them an, the same amount evenly? And I've run into that problem all the time in class where I'm starting to pass out things and then I realize, oh no, I gave you two, I gave the first person too many and then the last person now doesn't have enough. When we did that popcorn activity, we ran into that problem, right? That scarcity activity where somebody grabbed too much of something and then it wasn't evenly distributed. And what this all is guys you're actually doing division so as you're working with equal groups you're dividing your numbers and what that means is you are taking one total sum and you're breaking it up into all these little groups and that's going to be how you are dividing so when we're dividing we're putting things into equal groups which is what you're doing this week so it's really really cool you guys are doing that already that's normally something you would do in third grade so for this problem example for today you have 30 pieces and you need to put them into five groups. So with that being said, that doesn't mean put them into groups of five. That means put them into five groups. What that problem is going to look like is 30 divided by five. And we want to find out how many are going to go in each group. That's our missing number, our variable, right? We could write a letter in there if we wanted to. So what my suggestion for you is here is on a piece of paper or on your table, draw out one, yeah, two, three, four, five. And then take that 30 and distribute it. So you could start out by saying, okay, what if I try five in this one and then five in this one and then five and then, and then do it that way? That's one way to do it. Or you can just distribute it in, um, let's see if I can make this bigger. There we go. Oh, too big. <laughs> um, or you can just distribute it doing dots the whole way or with your actual objects like that's what this activity is is that you're using the the, the snacks you're using m&ms or cheetos or crackers or something so you would just put them into group one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So that's how you could do that. And then you should see that you have a total of six in each group. So your repeated addition sentence isn't going to be five plus five plus five plus five. It's going to be six plus six plus six. And I'm running out of space here. Plus six plus six. And then don't forget, in order for it to be a true um, number sentence, you want to have that equals at the end, that total there. So if we go back to our first problem, 30 divided by 6, we know the answer, or I'm sorry, 30 divided by 5, the answer is 6. So that's how you're working on this. A lot of you guys have already jumped to figuring out that this is also a multiplication problem, that you have the number 6 five times. So you could write that as 6 times 5 or five times six. And we could read that as this saying, I have the number six five times, or I have five groups of six. Um, we know the commutative property in addition means that we can flip flop those problems and we can do the same thing with multiplication. Um, pause for a second. At our next problem, it does say putting them into two equal groups. So that doesn't mean that I'm going to be putting them in groups of two and then groups of two. 
I don't want to do that. This problem is specifically asking for me to put them into one group, two groups. So on a piece of paper, I will draw it out and then take my pieces and separate them and sort them into those two groups to see. Now, if your groups end up being uneven, then you're not truly dividing. You're not putting them into those equal groups. Uh, make sure you do write the repeated addition sentence that goes with it. And then for this one, this one does the same thing as the day before, but you're taking 20 items and you're doing it into two equal groups, four equal groups, and five equal groups. So you'll have three problems there. Re write the repeated addition sentence. And then um, it also is encouraging that you create a story problem to go along with it. So with that, here we go, you get to create scenarios that represent those equal groups. So this is something that happens. For example, I have 30 books and three buckets to put them in. How do I want to divide them up? So again, we're thinking about that in terms of division. So you could use that word or how many, yesterday we talked about a keyword is each. So you could do a problem that says, I have 20 race cars and I want to put them on five shelves, how many race cars are going to be on each of the five shelves? And then that's you putting them into the five equal groups. <laughs> oh boy, it is very difficult. You guys are telling me that it is very difficult to draw it. So here's your shelves, three, four, five, and you could even use the emoji tool. Um, you can remember we talked about that upload button, so you could save a little image of a car and upload that to Seesaw. I don't know what I have. I have a, I have a circle, so I could, if that was my, my race car, I could add that circle and do it that way. It's just like a fancy thing. Um, you can also do um, where you, I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong one. You can also click the text box and you can put even just like an R for race car. You could do a video, film yourself acting this out. Have all 20 of your race cars and be like, what am I gonna do with all these? I have five shelves here, what can I do? So you can come up with those different scenarios, those problems. Stop motion is something that we were gonna be working on um, at the end of the year. Um, which is just a free app. It's called Stop Motion. There's also free green screen apps um, that you can practice with to put that digital background in um, to kind of create it. You can get outside. You can make them um, have to do with the, the Earth Day today. There's so many different ways to take these problems and instead of just a boring old math problem, how are you going to make them exciting? How are you going to make them engaging? And that's something that kiddos, I want you to, to challenge yourself to do. So go on um, Chatter Kid, go on Pick Collage, go on those apps that you're familiar with and create and explore and, and make them challenging for other students and share them on here and tag your friends in them and, and we'll see if they can answer your story problems and things like that too. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys are celebrating Earth Day and um, enjoying this beautiful weather and this beautiful Earth and planet that we have. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon.